Hey everybody, I'm Laura and welcome to my very first Q&A video. Hope we talk about some interesting stuff. Here we go. Swing Siren asks, one thing I've always struggled with is when my lead is seriously rhythmically off. What can I do in this situation? This is a really great question and it's one that's kind of hard to answer because a lot of it is personal preference and a lot of it is context. For example, there's a really big difference between your lead being a very skilled dancer who is having trouble hearing the eight in a particular song versus your eight being a brand new dancer who's having trouble hearing the beat in general. There's a big difference between your lead feeling confident in a social dancing situation versus a leader who is feeling very nervous in a social dancing situation. For example, if my leader is off the eight count, but it seems like all they need is a little cue, and it seems like they're in a space where if I give them that cue, we're still gonna have a good dance together. It's not gonna ruin our dance. I'll use my words. I might say something like, I'm hearing the eight differently than you are. Can I show you where I hear it? And then I'll count off with words. I might ask them where they hear it. It's possible that I'm off as well. However, if my leader is not on the beat at all, chances are really good that my verbal cues are not going to help. I might set an example, especially if I'm in open position, we have a little bit of distance, and I'm gonna be on beat every time we're in open position. If we're in closed position, chances are really good I'm not gonna be on beat. I'm gonna be there with my leader because I don't want it to feel like a fight. After all, chances are really good that if my leader is off beat, my leader is a newer dancer. I think there are very few rules in social dancing, but if there are any, this is one of them, don't make your partner feel bad. Everybody is trying to do their best. I gotta say, I sympathize, I have been there. It is frustrating to have a dance that is less fun, especially if you have an emotional connection to a song, especially if that song is not a recording, it's a live band, and you're never gonna hear that version of that song again. I understand but I think it's very important to be patient in that moment. And that's something that I'm also working on. Funnel your enjoyment into something else. Perhaps have a conversation with your partner instead. Eventually the song will end, you will thank each other, you will go your separate ways, and then you can have perhaps a more fulfilling dance with somebody who has more of a connection to the beat. And then perhaps the person you just danced with would have had a good time dancing with you and will continue to dance and will continue to learn more about the music and will get a better connection to the beat and then the two of you will have a more successful dance later on. And this is one of the goals, have as many people that you can have good dances with as possible, even if those good dances are gonna be in the future. Everyone in the world asks, where did you get your cat tree? My dad made it. We have told him he should open an Etsy store, but can you imagine the shipping that people would have to pay? So, my friend Lindsay's kids ask, why is your cat never on the tree? Honestly, it's because most of the time I'm filming during the day and so she does not want to hang out here with me where I am not paying attention to her or feeding her. So she's in the office with Brooks who will love her and pet her while he's at work. However, during any of the videos where Brooks and I are shooting together, she is typically in the same room and we are having to actively shoo her away from the camera. Raja Ritz asks, do you take inspiration from other dances in your solo jazz? If yes, what are they? Oh my gosh, so many dances have so many flavors that I really love and find so inspirational. Tap, obviously, Lindy Hop and Tap are buddies. So many Lindy Hoppers knew how to do at least basic tap steps back in the day. Have taken several tap classes, not confident enough to call myself a tap dancer. People from musicals like Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, even Bob Fosse, they're not really doing traditional tap or Lindy Hop, but they have so many flavors that would be really easy to incorporate. Hip hop is gorgeous. It comes from the same culture as Lindy Hop. It has a lot of similar moves as Lindy Hop because it's Lindy Hop's baby. I've taken several hip hop classes, but nobody would ever call me a hip hop dancer. African dancing, the great, great, great granddaddy of Lindy Hop is gorgeous and I actually made up a move based on a Zuli foot dance. YouTube algorithm was like, you might like this. And I was like, algorithm, you so got me. I've taken several African dancing classes, not an African dancer. A lot of Latin dances, oh, crazy hip and leg stuff that will spiceify your dance. Beautiful stuff. Never took a Latin class, but I've seen it and I'm like, mm, maybe this in a box step. Now for all of this, I'm not exactly trying to break down a specific move, but I'm trying to see the flavor, that spark of what I really, really love that inspires me and see how that might fit 
into the vernacular jazz that I know. Maybe I'll make up a whole new move based off of what I've seen. There are also lots of dancers in the jazz idiom that I find incredibly inspiring. The Nicholas Brothers, the Barry Brothers, Marie Bryant, all of Whitey's Lindy Hoppers, especially almonds. I love me some almonds. The more you can see, the more you can think about, incorporate into your own body, I think the more flexible and more full your dancing can become. And Jadunzit asks, perfect worst type of lead behavior at social dances. Are you going for some red blood right now? Somebody's asking for some hot goss right now. For me, worst lead behavior is treating me like I'm a vehicle for your own genius. If you're leading me into as many fancy things as you can think of, and you don't stop to look up and smile at my face, I feel like, like I'm being used. And that's never fun. And of course, I think the perfect lead behavior is the antithesis of that. Dance with me. See if you can connect to me as a human being instead of just me as a follow. Regardless of your skill level, if we can find each other as human beings and share something that makes us both laugh in a genuine way, oh, that is such a good moment in social dancing. Jorgel Fulaveria asks, what was your scariest moment being a Lindy Hopper? Honestly, it's probably getting into the finals of any solo jazz competition because they're always really good people in the finals and I always feel so intimidated and it's just you out there when it's solo jazz. You cannot blame anybody else and it's like you looking at YouTube and the world instead of you focusing on a part. It's so scary. It's so scary. Uncle E. White asks, when are you doing a shag video? Honestly, I, I don't know how to do shag, so I should not do a video on it. Ebiography asks, after arms, what about hands? Is there a neutral position you like when they're not busy? Honestly, I'm still really working on my hands. Every time I see a video of myself, they're always in little fists and it drives me crazy. If you look at the old timers when they're telling stories, their hands are always a part of that storytelling. Their fingers are always a little bit extended, not in a jazz hands kind of way, but in an active way. So I'm really trying to go for more of that. I'm trying to have my fingers trace the shape that I'm going for, and hopefully that will add more extension to what I'm doing. I'm not very good at it yet, but it is something I'm going for. If you do little fists, you're not alone. I'm with you. Ert Altenosen asks, how your dance swings as hell? Aw, shucks. Eugenia Sophia 24, your favorite aha moment while learning Lindy Hop. I have two, and both of them are dancing with Sky Humphreys. I learned so much on the social dance floor. The first moment is we were dancing together in Canada, and we were social dancing, and we were doing hand-to-hand -hand Charleston. And I could tell on one of the hand-to-hands, he was asking me to continue forward, to do a kick step and progress, instead of stop in that kick and reverse for the hand-to-hand. -hand. But I enforced the stop for the kick, reverse and hand-to-hand, -hand because it was hand-to-hand. -hand. That's what I was used to. I didn't think about hand-to-hand -hand as being that flexible of a move. Now, I don't think that he said anything with his face. He definitely didn't say anything with his words. He kept on smiling and dancing, but I could tell him the feeling that I had just shut off an opportunity for us. And I remembered that feeling and hopefully my hand-to-hand -hand has become a lot more flexible as a result. Second moment, we were social dancing in Denver and we were doing Tandem Charleston and he did a push out. And during the push out where I could see him, he did some variation. And I don't even know it was that complicated a variation, but I remember I just stopped dancing and screamed because I was so impressed by that moment. Uh, and uh, don't do that. Try to keep on dancing. Try to keep your cool, keep your cool, breathe, and then maybe freak out later. Take that as inspiration to work on later. Pao Jung Jung asks, do you need a good partner to become a great dancer? Okay, full disclosure, I already shot this section and then as I was thinking about it, I decided to come back and add to that because I answered the question as though it was, do you need a partner to become a good follow? Not, do you need a partner to become a good dancer? And I want to acknowledge that those are two very different things and it says something about a bias or a mindset I have that I automatically answer the question as though it was, do you need a partner to become a good follow? So let's think about what is a good dancer. Somebody who is 
really connected to the music, somebody who moves beautifully, dynamically, somebody who does cool stuff to the music. Of course, I can only talk about my opinion and my experience, but it sounds like first and foremost, get familiar with that music. Dancing is supposed to be what the music looks like, so you want to listen to as much jazz as you can. Get it in your bones. And I think the second part is just dancing as much as you possibly can. Move yourself to that music as much as you possibly can. I think a big mistake that a lot of people make is they don't want to go to a dance until they're good enough, until they've gone to enough classes where they have accumulated enough lead and follow experience to where they won't feel bad for a potential partner that they might encounter at said dance, or they won't be embarrassed at not being good enough at said dance. And I think that this is the wrong way to go about it. If you are waiting to be good enough to go to a dance, I think probably you will never be good enough for yourself. Just go to that dance because dancing, again, is not about lead follow. Does it help? Yes. In a partner dance? Absolutely. But dancing is something more than that. It's your connection to the music. It's your body's ability to express itself to the music. And that's just going to take practice. When I say at the end of my videos, the best way to learn how to dance is to dance. I mean it. Dance a whole bunch. And then dancing in groups of people, videoing yourself and critiquing yourself, making up choreography. There's all sorts of things you can do. There's all sorts of different ways that you can dance as much as possible. But dance as much as possible. I think that this is one of the reasons why the pandemic has been so... Uh, brutal on social dancing is that it takes the social away. When you go to a dance, you feel more creative. The vibe is there. There's all these people. There's this beautiful space. There's this fantastic music and you feel more connected to it because of your presence in that room with all of those people. And it's just not going to be the same jamming alone in your living room. If you're in that situation, my advice to you is find an excuse to dance. Make up a choreography with somebody in another country. Do these YouTube videos. Honestly, you, you're my excuse for dancing right now. I try to make up dances for you because I don't have events to go to or anything like that. Best way to learn to dance is to listen to music and dance to that music. Do you need a partner to become a better dancer? Sure, partners are very helpful. They see you, they inspire you, they push you to do things, they give you excuses to dance because you're with somebody, like a gym buddy. But I think input in general is really helpful. One of my main partners during the pandemic has been Al Menz, and he has never let me down. Anyhow, here's the stuff I said about following. Pao Jung Jung asked, do you need a good partner to become a great follow? I don't know. Uh, one of the things that I did a whole lot when I was learning to dance, and I'm still learning to dance, and I can only talk to you about my own experience, is I social danced a lot, a lot, a lot, as much social dancing as I could. Uh, and while I was social dancing, I tried to really pay attention to my goals as a follow, like keep my momentum going as much as possible, keep my arm with me, really work on having good rhythm, like all the stuff that I had learned and like the latest private lesson or the workshop that I had taken or something like that. And while I'm focusing on that technique, I was still able to really have a ton of fun and just be a goofy dancer. I very rarely had super amazing advanced partners, but I always had people who were kind of close to my level. And we didn't necessarily practice a whole lot, but I knew I could rely on them to have some great social dances. And sometimes we would practice. Honestly, practicing in and of itself is kind of a specific art. I know very few people who know how to do it. And I mean, even solo dancing, this is a social dance. So even if you're not dancing lead follow with the partner, it's so helpful to have somebody else to dance with. And that person doesn't have to be amazing, but having somebody that enjoys the dance that you can just get together with and dance is so helpful. And then if you're there to help them more than they're there to offer advice to you, you have to sort of solidify your ideas enough to express them in an intelligible way. And I find that to be very helpful as well. Brianna Hayes asks, what changes are you hoping to see on the scene when things open up again? Okay, this is a big question and I'm not gonna do a great job in this YouTube Q&A. 
One thing that I'm grateful to the pandemic for is giving us an opportunity to pause and talk about certain things. For example, many black dancers have gotten a chance and the space to come forward and tell us about the difficulty they have being black in the Lindy Hop scene, Lindy Hop being a dance invented by black people. Now, this has opened up valuable conversations about how the dance is taught and who claims ownership of the dance and who gets to say what is and is not Lindy Hop. Big questions, and I am not an expert in talking about these questions. If you're interested in hearing more about this from some super smart people, check out Collective Voices for Change and the Black Lindy Hoppers Fund. They've been doing great work educating people like me about issues like this and leveling the playing field for black artists. I mean, I'd love to say I want all these issues to just be gone when the scene opens back up again. That doesn't seem super realistic. So minimally, I'd love more diversity in the scene, and I'd love the people in the scene to be open-minded and have a desire to seek out the culture that Lindy Hop comes from. Uh, big questions like that, rather than seeking out the answers to smaller questions like, how do I get my swing out to work really well at fast tempos? I mean, not that good swing outs aren't amazing. They're just such a small piece of a massive piece of art. A great piece of advice I got recently is, if you love Japanese artwork, eventually you gotta go to Japan. You gotta learn from somebody not only who does it really well, but who speaks the language and is connected to the culture. Jez Vera Solo asks, how do you edit the videos? App, do you record with your mobile? I do record with my iPhone and I edit my videos with Final Cut Pro. In my early videos, I did everything on iMovie, which is a free program. You can layer on a song, you can cut different clips together, you can put on text. It does a lot of different things. iMovie does a lot more things. Something I do for my twins video is I actually got a green screen, which is actually not that expensive a purchase. If you're interested, you just get a big bolt of green fabric, but you do need something to put it on. And after that, I first shoot a version of myself without the green screen. Then I shoot a version of myself with the green screen. Then I layer them on together. And then if I need to change some tiny things, I use that using the keyframe feature in Final Cut Pro. I am working on kind of an old laptop, so exporting does take a day. But other than that, it's good. Things gradually get fancier and more professional as we go on. Thank you, Patreon. Tiffany A. Bay asks, what are all your thoughts about shoes for Lindy Hop and solo jazz? Man, all my thoughts. Uh, I don't think there's room in this video for all the thoughts, but I feel like I'm really bad at dancing in heels. I think that hard leather is difficult for me. I love suede but it's a very personal preference. You do you. And finally, Anne-Marie Huddleston asks, how do you juggle family and personal life? This is my parents' neighbor. Anne-Marie, hello, good to see you. Well, for one, Malcolm is a pretty good napper at this point, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't sleep, eat, or shower anymore. And if you cut out those three things, it is amazing what you can get done. <laughs> really though, it can be genuinely challenging. If you are a single parent or you have more than one child, you are blowing my mind that you get anything done right now. <laughs> All right, that's the Q&A. I hope you liked it. Big thank you to the people of Patreon for helping to make this video free for people like you. And if you wanna join them, the link's in the description. If you enjoyed this or you didn't enjoy this, leave a comment and let me know if you wanna see more or less of this kind of stuff. Half of the money from this channel goes towards organizations that support African diasporic artists and art because Lindy Hop is a black dance. One of those organizations is Black Lindy Hoppers Fund. And of course, in my opinion, the best way to learn how to dance is to do it.